Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing how to use Google Sheets query in order to pivot data. Um, pivot tables are a data visualization tool uh, that people use to explore uh, data sets and they're really popular and they're great. Um, I personally uh, like to pivot my data when uh, with using Google Sheets query. Um, it just provides me with more ability to uh, segment my information, to explore my information, and to visualize my information. So we're going to be um, running through how to use Pivot uh, and introducing the concept at large. Uh, we're going to use some subsequent videos to dive deeper into it. So this is going to be a fundamentals uh, level one introduction to query in Google Sheets. So we're gonna begin uh, by looking at our data set. And uh, we have a column uh, G where we have a, um, a, a dimension that has two different values. So we have some line items that are part of a loyalty program and we have some line items that are part of like, that are just identifying non-members. So they're not part of the loyalty program. Um, but this column could be anything, you know, that you have in your data set um, that you would want to see next to one another associated with a value. So what we're going to do is we're going to aggregate column D, which right now is just called inventory, um, and we're going to aggregate it to the country, and then we're going to pivot by the program type so we can see how much inventory we have for the loyalty program and then how much inventory we have for non-members. So we're going to begin by going to query uh, and we are going to reference our data in sheet one and we're going to use double quotes because that is how uh, our query statement needs to begin. So we're going to use our select statement in order to identify the column that we want to aggregate to, which in this case is column A, which is the country names. And then we are going to include column C because we want this to be a time series analysis. Uh, so we want month in there. And then we're going to use the sum method in order to aggregate column D to uh, the country and the month that the inventory is associated with. Uh, I just hit command enter. I'm on a Mac. Uh, that's how I get this line break in here. And now I'm gonna use my where statement. And I'm going to say where A is equal to the United States. Um, because I'm referencing the United States, that's a string, I need to wrap it in a single quote. And now I am going to use my group by in order to identify that I want to aggregate all inventory from column D in my sum method going to uh, C and A. This is where pivot comes into play. I'm going to use the word pivot and I'm going to reference column G. Now, one thing that I want to point out while we're here is that when individuals are introduced to uh, the pivot operation within the query function, sometimes they get thrown off by the difference between the select statement and the pivot statement. So if you want to pivot by a particular column, you do not include it in the select statement. If you want to pivot by a column, use it and pivot. And as we've mentioned in previous query videos, the order of your clauses, your statements is very important. Pivot has to come after group by. Group by has to come after where, where has to come after select. You don't have to have where and you don't have to have group by, but if you do have where, it has to come after select. And if you do have group by, it has to come after select and or where. So there is an instance in here where we could, like you can see in our example here, right? It's actually a pivot example in the documentation. There is no group by in here because it's not referencing any column that needs to be aggregated to anything. But because we're using a static column like A and C that is referencing dimensions, we have to use our group by in order to tell it that we want it to aggregate to these two values here. 
So now that we've got our clauses in there that identify all the things that we want, I'm also going to use order by because I want to have the most recent month at the top. And I'm also going to limit my query to 25 results. I'm going to add a double quote, comma, one, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And now you can see in here that we have 25 results, which is taking us to row 26. We have our header in here, which is uh, the one plus the 25. You can see up top, we have December, 2022. And then we have all of 2022, all the way to January. And then we have 2021 all the way through. And then we have December, 2020 in here. And then we have a pivot instance where we have our loyalty program in column C and our non-member program in column D. Pivot is like, it's just a really good tool to have in your toolkit. Um, what I'm gonna dive deeper into in future videos is there are going to be instances where um, you wanna do more advanced things with Pivot, um, such as doing math operations and, and nesting within uh, Pivot. Um, additionally, I am going to um, produce a solution to a common problem that you'll see in Pivot, uh, which I'll introduce here. And if you're interested, feel free to check out my other videos. Um, what will happen is um, you will have instances where you want to add uh, two columns together. And there are gonna be some instances where you will have an incomplete data set. So what I used in here was I changed um, our where clause from saying where A equals the United States to where B matches two individuals in the data set. And you can see we have some blank data in here. If we attempted to nest uh, a mathematical operation in here using a second query statement, we wouldn't get a result. This is what I call the zero solution, which is how you fill in values for missing values in query or in, in pivot within query. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please check out my channel. Uh, I have a bunch of other videos up. I hope you found this helpful. Love feedback, hit up that comment section and uh, I wish you best of luck on your data journey.